The deterioration of bank services was the cause for lack of response from most of Algerian businessmen for the government's call to transfer their money to official banks. In this edition, we'll focus on the rich tourism potentialities of the coastal city of Tnis, west of Algiers. Officials, the wreckage of an Indonesian plane carrying 54 people has been found in the remote western Papua region. Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Zay News Live and welcome to this English News Edition. As mentioned in the headlines, Algerians do not trust their country's bank system. This is an impeccable fact and the intransigence of officials to ensure tranquility between citizens and financial bodies, which remain far away from the hopes of money owners and experts together. Some Snowsi for more details. Algerians do not trust their country's bank system. This is an impeccable fact under the intransigence of officials to ensure tranquility between citizens and financial bodies, which remain far away from hopes of money owners and experts together. The deterioration of bank service was the cause of lack of response from most of the businessmen for the government's calls to transfer their money to official channels. The scenario of the national currency's deterioration which started in the 80s did not leave the citizens any options except from orientation towards storing their financial savings either in foreign currency or real estate as an economic mechanism to maintain the value for financial assets for citizens in light of the unprecedented decline of the national currency. These are the interpretations of economic analysts who rated the national currency problems within the strongest reasons that push the citizens not to trust banks. No one disagrees on the delay of national banks to keep pace with progress on the global banking field level and the best example is the total absence of Algerian financial institutions in the classification of the 1,000 best universal banks list proclaimed by the British magazine The Banker and trust struggle continues between Algerian banks and their clients. With regard to the national building sector, the government has imposed new drastic measures to regulate the access to private contractors for achieving major building projects, especially those concerning the construction of schools, hospitals and residential housing compounds through the presentation beforehand of an executive financial and technical program to this effect. Mohamed Burswan. The dual program includes a pledge to provide 100% of the funds allocated for the project, while the technical presentation sets the precise deadline for the completion of the relevant projects. Sources from the Association of Altoon Entrepreneurs said the latter was now applying the new procedures in awarding deals to serious private contractors, notably by imposing the full amount of money management for project delivery for housing residences, schools and hospitals before acquiring the 100% of the amount. This is aimed at avoiding the recourse to borrowing from banks in order to be able to carry through the building projects in due time. These stringent procedures are geared to straightening out the situation and facing up to any untoward contingency in case of gross lapses or drawbacks from the contractors concerned. The same sources suggest that the new governmental measures are aimed at cleansing the national building sector by stamping out mismanagement and delays in the works, as well as stripping all failing private contractors of any important projects linked to the construction of hospitals, schools and new housing units in various parts of the country. Now let's shift to the antique town of Tnis in western Algeria, where the Ministry of Culture is set to launch an overhaul operation affecting every corner of the Warandas city to preserve its rich cultural heritage and promote local tourism in a bid to attract more national and foreign tourists. Mustafa Azouk for more details. Tnis is an antique town which has existed since the 8th century before Christ. It was called Katnis at that time. Tnis or Katnis was first a Phoenician town, then it was dominated by the Romans. The city then was built and restored by Muslims back in the Andalusian era. This national heritage is considered to be older than the ancient city of Caspar in downtown Algiers. <laughs> Now we're next to the antique dwellings of Caspar Tnes. 
as you can see, the Islamic architecture is prevailing in the region due to the fact that this city was restored during the Andalusian era in 875. The Kasbah of Nes is 11 centuries older than the one in Algiers, given the fact that the ancient city of Kasbah in Algiers was established by the Ottomans. The ancient city of Tunis was classified as a national heritage back in 2007. This particular town is known to be an ancient Islamic-based city in Algeria, including three mosques, namely mosques of Al-Aziza, Sidi Blabez and Maiza. And to preserve this historic and patrimonial site, the Ministry of Culture is set to launch a large-scale overhaul operation, set to affect every corner of this marvelous and wondrous city. There is a large-scale ambitious project aimed at preserving every corner of this city. This initiative is spearheaded by the Ministry of Culture and supervised by the Cultural Directorate of Tnes. The overhauling process is set to take effect starting from January 2016. Amid all the marvelous, ancient and historic sites found in our country, the tourism dimension somehow does not reflect Algeria's huge potential. Thereby, the authorities concerned must take all the necessary measures to preserve this precious national heritage. Crafts and Traditional Industry Exhibition Week has been organized in the coastal province of Jijil in eastern Algeria, attracting many keen visitors from around the national territory eager to learn about the traditional works of the southern province of Wetsouf. This event is being held as part of the state's efforts to shore up local tourism and help Algerian craftsmen find a thriving market and secure a brand for their well-devised products. Karim Fazakri. The province of Jijil is hosting for a week an event of traditional and artisanal industry. The guest of honor this year is the southern province of Wetsouf, which added more beauty to the capital of the Cornice, bringing with it its breathtaking traditional heritage and cultural variety. This event is organized as part of the great effort which the government is making to help craftsmen brand their products and market them by making a direct coordination with their clients and the vast public in order to have a feedback about their products to develop them and to place orders as well. The province of Wetsouf is present in the province of Jijil as part of Artisanal Works Week event. It is part of the objective to preserve our cultural heritage and artisanal industry and to encourage local tourism. We brought many craftsmen from Wet province to introduce Jijil residents with the richness of Wetsouf province. An attractive glimpse of pure traditional and ancient heritage of the province of Thousand Domes and Dome in a beautiful picture drawn by exquisite folkloric dancers, traditional dresses and cuisine, as well as the Sufi carpet. The purpose of our participation in this exhibition is to strengthen the bond of brotherhood and national unity between the provinces and their people and to get to know them and they get to know us to exchange experiences about crafts next time we hope to see their products. My work is based on material I get from palm trees. This kind of work wasn't as strong and as artistic as now. For me, I tried to develop this. I learned it from my family and I tried to add much development in it. The purpose of my participation is to introduce our province and its traditional artisanal work in addition to find a market and brand for our product. Among the problems which the craftsmen face is marketing a raw material. The exhibition witnessed an interesting turnout of curious visitors to learn about some southern traditions and costumes coming from the south of Algeria. 
Moving on to world news in Syria, government forces a strike on a crowded marketplace in Duma has reportedly killed at least 80 people and injured around 200 others, many of whom are in critical condition. Their strike coincided with the first visit of Stephen Oberyan, United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, to Damascus. I mean, Mr. Well, for more details. Initial local reports from Douma in southwestern Syria indicate that at least 80 people have been killed earlier today in a government-led airstrike on the rebel-held city. Around 200 people are said to have been injured in the attack. Anti-government activists in Douma have claimed that the situation on the ground was catastrophic, with local hospitals and clinics overflowing with wounded civilians. The marketplace and surrounding buildings have been completely totaled, with rescue workers continuing to search through the rubble for survivors. Syrian government forces have been regularly targeting the city and neighboring areas, which are only 11 kilometers away from Damascus, through air raids in recent weeks. Hundreds of civilians are amongst the casualties of these attacks, including 37 in an airstrike just last week. The airstrike coincided with the first visit to Syria of Stephen O'Brien, the recently appointed United Nations Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, who met with Walid Mualim, Syria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, in Damascus today. According to United Nations figures, some 220,000 people have been killed and more than 9 million displaced in the ongoing four-year civil war. An Indonesian domestic flight with 55 people on board lost contact with air traffic control in Papua province Sunday afternoon, the nation's search and rescue agency said on Twitter. The Trigana Air Service flight left Tinsani or Sentani Airport in Jayapura at 2.22 p.m. and was scheduled to land in Oxyville at about 3.16 p.m. Local sources said there was no indication that a distress call was made from the plane. The missing plane was carrying 44 adult passengers, five children and five crew members. And according to latest reports, the wreckage has been found in the remote western Papua region. A suicide bombing in the Punjab region of Pakistan has left at least nine dead, including the provincial minister. A local Taliban-affiliated terror group has claimed responsibility for the attack. I mean, Mr. Well, for more details. A suicide attack has killed one of Pakistan's provincial ministers and at least eight others in the Punjab province of Pakistan, the largest in the country. The blast apparently targeted Suja Khanzada, the home minister of Punjab, as he was holding a meeting with 20 people in his home. Rescue workers at the site of the attack said that nine bodies were recovered, but a district information officer claimed that up to 30 people were in the building at the time of the attack. A Taliban-affiliated terror group, Lashkar-e-Islam, claimed responsibility for the attack stating that it was done as retaliation for military operations against them and also affirming that Pakistan and Punjab should expect more attacks similar to this one in the future. I came here to honor death. I had left the area five minutes prior and my dad was still there. As soon as I got home, I heard a huge explosion. I ran back here and I saw that the building was nothing but a pile of rubble and a police line had been set up. I told them to let me through because my dad was under the rubble. Punjab is Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's home province and the biggest and wealthiest in the country. In more international news, scores of Chinese firefighters are still missing following the massive explosions that hit an industrial area in Tianjin. And at an official or press conference on Sunday, authorities announced that the death toll had risen to 112, but added that 95 people had been confirmed missing, including 85 firefighters. Karim Fazakri. Chinese police have confirmed the presence of deadly sodium cyanide after explosions in the city of Tianjin last week. The state-run Beijing News reported the chemical, which is fatal when inhaled, was roughly east of the blast site. China state news agency Tsinghua said residents who had taken refuge in school were evacuated on Saturday after the wind changed direction prompting fears that toxic gases could blow inland. It was not clear from media reports how many people had been evacuated, but a district official told reporters there had been no evacuation. Meanwhile, families of missing workers and firefighters are furious there is still no word on their missing loved ones. A sister of one of the missing firefighters said, we are waiting for answers. There has been no information at all.
We want to see them dead or alive, says the brother of another missing firefighter. We are all very anxious. They keep us waiting, but I don't think I can wait any longer. It's my brother. China Central Television CCTV reported a 50-year-old man was rescued near the blast zone. He was in a stable condition after spending three days inside a shipping container. And finally, to wrap it up, the Moroccan artist Huda Saad performed for the Algerian public on the third night of Jamila Arab Festival in its 11th edition, which kicked off last Thursday and continues its festivities until the 22nd of August. Usama Sinsi. The Moroccan artist Huda Saad performed for the Algerian public on the third night of Jamila Arab Festival in its 11th edition, which kicked off last Thursday and continues its festivities until the 22nd of August. <laughs> The audience was amazing and I could see that people were really listening. That's why I was really selective with the songs that I performed. The third evening continued the festivities with the esteemed artist Horia Aish, where she performed some of her folkloric songs which saw positive reactions from the audience. I came to present some work that I've been preparing for a year and a half, and this work represents Algerian singers. The performances in the third evening of the festival varied from Eastern music to Southern, and the different artists entertained the public in their own way. I really love the festival and I could see that the people are energetic and interactive. I hope they will maintain their authenticity. One nation and one people. And I have one word to say. Algeria is the mother and lover of everyone. Another night wraps up at Jamila festival in its 11th edition under the slogan of one people and one united Maghribian nation. The end of our English news edition. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.